if everybody in training and everybody in mentoring kind of comes from a common background, then um, it's not so surprising that they begin to think of the problems and interpret the results through that common background. And they think, oh, well, we all agree. It must be right, right? But if that common background has narrowed the, our thinking that it must be right because everyone agrees, then we're lost. Having diversity is, I think, the way that good science gets done. It's having not just a, a diversity of scientific disciplines, but it's having diversity in backgrounds and educational experiences and coming into science from a different uh, viewpoint or vantage point. And that can only make your scientific question and how you pursue it stronger. I view science at its best as self-expression. Each person has their own personality, their own res resonance, and if we think of science as a kind of a, a foray where a group of explorers are trying to make increasingly detailed and accurate stories about the natural world and we're engaging with it, we need all these different points of view in order to see the in incredible complexity and levels of science. Some people are really good at this ineffable creation of new concepts, and others are really, really interested in developing the, the best ways to measure, and others are interested in taking those measuring tools and pushing the field to its extremes and all the applications and all the detail, and the others are interested in putting this information together and transmitting it to the next generation and making a coherent story, and, and so the more different styles we have, the more chance we have to, to engage with this amazing nature and create more and more accurate, compelling, rich stories about our world. Everyone in science comes from a different background. I came from a family that was a working class family and you know I was the first person in my immediate family to go to college. So I didn't have you know parents that were PhDs that sort of knew how to ask questions um, that would drive some further understanding of basic biology or anything like that. And instead, you know, I was driven by a, a family who, um, who was able to think <laughs> on their feet, um, was able to work hard to achieve what they were able to achieve. And to be able to, to think about transporting those skills and those sort of life lessons to focus on, um, in my case, science. I think the capacity to offer a broad view of uh, ways that people think about scientific problems, scientific approaches, the ways to, to map out their lives in ways that will be enriching and rewarding um, uh, and still allow uh, really good science to be done is a, an essential challenge that we have to meet that uh, in order to make people feel encouraged and optimistic that they can map a successful scientific endeavor onto their own styles and, and value sets. The goal of science is, is discovery, to figure out new things about questions that are of interest. And the questions are very complex. How does the human brain work? How does any brain work? How do organisms survive? You know, what is the nature of physiology? All these are very big questions and we can't predict where meaningful answers will lie. We can predict to some extent that certain approaches will give rise to answers, but we can't be certain that we have access to all the variables because the things we're studying are so complex. That means that it's necessary to approach the questions from many different perspectives. It's a, it's a huge adventure being a scientist, and the more we share the ways we do it, each one can explore and discover their own way of doing it. I think the more creative science will be and also the greater our well-being. So there's actually data showing that more diverse groups are able to solve a problem either more quickly or in a better way. Before I became a scientist, I was actually a professional basketball player. And one of the hallmarks of a basketball team is actually to have different positions, but to play as a team. And to be honest, when I think of my, my lab, I think of a basketball team. <laughs> and uh, I do think everybody fulfills a different role in it. But the key is that everybody helps each other on the level of a project, but also personally. And uh, basically the environment that I try to foster and that I'm very proud of, uh, that I think we have achieved, is that I do think we're more than the sum of our parts. And as a team, as a diverse team, I think we do a lot better 
than if everybody were to fight for themselves. I'm involved in this human genome editing endeavor. One of the things that we did was to sponsor a big meeting at the National Academy of Sciences. One of the topics that came up in op open discussion was this fantastic opportunity we have to wipe out uh, a set of, of diseases. And one of the things that was talked about was uh, deafness. And so people were pretty confident about that being, of course, that would be a great thing to do until a person stood up and went to the mic and said, I'm deaf, um, my you know, family is deaf, and, and we regard this as one of the rich binding experiences of our existence. And don't you t stand up and take away my disability. Uh, it was a riveting moment that just sort of said to me and I think to many of us, that if we think about these problems narrowly, right, we can just get it wrong. That's one where, where it's, it has this big social component and that's really important for us to be thinking about. But there are scientific problems where it's just as dangerous uh, to be thinking about things narrowly.